Hello, we're going to be working through the solutions to the problems assigned out of section 5.7. So first up, find the amount that results from a given investment. So we just have to remember that we have two different formulas for computing compound interest. One for when interest is computed in discrete steps, in other words, at specific points in time, and one when it is computed continuously, in other words, you're always earning interest. <clears throat> so here we are told we are being compounded quarterly. This tells us we get four interests, uh, four interest payments per year. So we're going to use the formula for only getting interest a few specific times. Okay, at which point we have that the amount of money we have after a certain quantity of payments is the uh, initial or principal amount times one plus the interest rate over the number of compoundings per time period times the number of compoundings per time period, and t is the number of time periods. So everything uh, represented here, a, is the amount at time t, where t is the number of time periods. Uh, p is what's called the principal. It's what you begin with. So this is your starting money. Uh, R is your interest rate. And N is the number of compoundings per time period. So in this particular problem, we have 2%, that's definitely going to be our interest rate, 2% or 0 0.02. $700 is what we invested at the beginning. Compounded quarterly tells me that the number of compoundings per time period is 4. The number of time periods is 3 years. So 3 years and 4 compoundings per year. And then A of T is what we need to figure out. But now we just have to plug everything into the formula and we get a of 3 equals 700 times 1 plus 0 0.02 over 4 all raised to the 4 times 3. So if I just pull out a calculator we end up with 700 times parenthesis 1 plus 0 0.02 over 4 close parenthesis raised to the 12th $743.17. Okay, so this is very similar. Okay, we have $400 invested. This is definitely our principal. Our interest rate is 0.11, 11%. Compounded daily, so that we have 365 compoundings per time period, and we have three time periods. So the amount we have after three years is given by our principal, 400, one plus the interest rate of 0.11 over the number of compoundings, 365, all raised to 365, times three. And again, I just pull out a calculator and we have 400 for a net result of $556.36, 55636. Okay, and so far all we've been doing is plugging things into an existing formula. Find the principal needed now to get the given amount. So now, okay, so to get $60, that's the amount we want to get out. Three and a half years, that's T, is 3.5. R is 6% or 0 0.06. Let me write that better. And compounded continuously means what we're going to use is the other interest computing uh, formula, where the amount you have at times t is the principal times e to the rt. Okay, but now we know the principal. Um, sorry, the principal is what we do not know. What we do know, however, is the amount a. So we set up $60 is equal to the unknown principal times e to the 0 0.06 times 3.5. And note that e to the 0 0.06 times 3.5 is just going to be some number, so I can just divide by it. So we get p is equal to 60 divided by e to the 0 0.06 times 3.5, whatever that is. And again, I'm just going to punch that into a calculator. 60 divided by e to the 
0 0.06 times 3.5, and we've got 48.64. So if I want to have $60 in three and a half years, I'd better have $48.64 today. All right, we've got $100 to invest at 9% compounded semi-annually. So we're compounding it twice per year. How long will it be before we have $200? So now the unknown is T, but we know everything else. And then we need to do the same problem if it's continuous. So let's just split the page down the middle Okay. If we're compounded semi-annually, we want to end up with $200, so that's our amount. Our principal is 100, our interest rate is 0 0.09. So using the semi-annually com uh, compounded interest, on the left-hand side, we'll have the amount that we get is 200, it should be the principal of 100 times 1 plus 0 0.09 over 2, because we have two compoundings per year, and the unknown is T. Okay, so if we divide both sides by 100, we get 2 is equal to 1 plus 0 0.09 over 2 to the 2t. Now the exponent contains our variable t, and we bring things down from exponents by using logarithms. So I'm just going to take the natural log of both sides. Natural log of 2 is equal to the natural log of 1 plus 0 0.09 over 2 to the 2t. And now we can use the fact that powers inside logarithms can be factored out. So this is going to be 2t times the natural log of 1 plus 0 0.09 over 2. Now note that we have t uh, extracted out of the exponent, so I can divide by 2, but I can also divide by the natural log of 1 plus 0 0.09 over 2, because that's just a number. So if I divide this over, 2 natural log of 1 plus 0 0.09 over 2, we end up on the right-hand side with just t, and on the left we have the natural log of 2 over 2 times the natural log of 1 plus 0 0.09 over 2. And let me go ahead and estimate that with a calculator. 2 times natural log of 1 plus 0 0.09 over 2, 7.87. So if I get two compoundings per year, it'll take me about 7.87 years to end up with twice as much money as I started with. Now in the right half, we'll set up the same beginning, except we're going to be using the continuous compounding. So instead of this one plus r over n business, we just have e to the rt. But again, I'm gonna start off by dividing by 100. And now taking a natural log is something I can do quite directly. Okay, that exponent comes down as a factor. And remember that the natural log of e is exactly one. So we get natural log of two is equal to 0.09t times one. I can divide by 0.09 to get t is the natural log of two over 0 0.09, 7.70. So with continuous compounding, we will end up at our interest, uh, at our investment goal slightly faster, not overwhelmingly faster. I mean, it was only 0.17 year uh, faster than the compounding twice per year situation. Okay, so suppose we have $20,000. That's our initial investment. So I'm gonna go ahead and label that as our principal. We want to grow it to 50,000. So that's our final amount, assuming an interest rate of 0.07 compounded continuously, so we're going to use that exponential form. How many years? So the unknown is t. So we want to end up with 50,000 with an initial uh, principal investment of 20,000 e to the 0.07t. Well, divide by 20,000. 0, 0, 0, 0, there we go. So we have 5 over 2 is equal to e to the 0.07t. Convert this to a natural logarithm, and we'll get 0.07t is equal to the natural log of 5 halves, and I just have to divide by 0 0.07. Okay, that's the exact answer. If you uh, want to estimate it with a calculator, we've got two decimal points. This is 13.09.
So it'll take just over 13 years to uh, increase our investment from 20,000 to 50,000, assuming we can get 7%.